Let's play a fun game, everybody. What's gonna come first? A legendary venture skin or weapon inspects? Ding, ding, ding. It's Neva! Something that gets commented on my Overwatch videos a lot is people making comments of, wow, Frogger is one of the only Overwatch creators that still has fun in the game. How does he do it? What's the secret? And then to, you know, to the people that really want to know the secret, well, let me tell you. It's alcohol. All right, so what I want to talk about today is Overwatch 2 and how I feel about Season 10 because everyone has been pretty sad about the game. A lot of people have been asking about my opinion on the game in, in Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, how I feel about the game. And I figured, all right, well, if people want to hear me yap, I'll, I'll, I'll yap for a bit. And if people like this content, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do more of it in the future because uh, I feel like my opinions are... God, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit sick and it's annoying me because my nose keeps blocking up. If people like this sort of content... I'll make some more in the future where I just yap because I like sitting down and talking to you guys about random stuff that happens in the Overwatch community. Let's talk about drama next and all that. Ooh, drama. Okay, so let's talk about the positives about this season. Ventures are free here and now. This is a character that's not locked behind the battle pass, which is great because I think the stupidest thing about Overwatch 2 is that's right, we don't have weapon inspects yet because where the hell are we? Anyways, uh, Venture and other heroes. A lock behind the battle pass, and that was really stupid. I, I didn't like that. I think that was really stupid. And for most people, uh, they wouldn't buy the battle pass. they just have to grind for the hero. And uh, that would be level 45. Originally, it was 55, but it would be level 45. And for most people that have a job or a 9 to 5 or, you know, don't religiously play Overwatch every single damn day, that's going to take you up to two weeks to unlock the hero. Or, I don't know, uh, maybe a month. Some people didn't even unlock the new heroes, which, which was annoying. Thankfully, the challenges you have after the, the heroes are gone out of the battle pass aren't like the worst in the world, but still, it's a little bit annoying, and I totally understand why uh, people hated it. I hated it myself, too. I don't know why I'm acting like I'm being like, yeah, I liked heroes locked behind the battle pass. I thought it was stupid. Dumb as hell. The amount of times during Malga meta where people would be like, oh, man, sorry, man, I didn't have Malga unlocked. You know how much that annoyed me? That was one of the dumbest things ever. I'm, I'm, I, that was the dumbest thing ever, man. I, I, it'd be hardcore Malga meta. Be like, hey, man. Do you have Malga unlocked by any chance? He's like, nah. I've got Roadhog unlocked. Yeah! And that guy would just run it down on Roadhog, and he'd be like, well, shame that I'm $10 broke. And it's like, man, if, like, and it's like even more annoying because Overwatch doesn't even have an in game gifting system. And it's like, I could have just bought people the Battle Pass if they really, if they really wanted it. I could have just said, you know what, buddy? Here, I'll just buy you the Battle Pass so you can play Malga. It's all bloody good. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still kind of traumatized from the Malga season. Uh, it was an absolute nightmare. I don't know how I managed to release a video every single week during that. But hey, uh, shout out to Widowmaker. Uh, she's the GOAT. Alright, so you can also buy old Mythic skins if you don't want the current one. That's a new change they've done to the Battle Pass, which is great. I like that. You have these things called, like, Mythic Prisms now, which you unlock through Battle Pass. Or you can buy separately, which they're quite expensive. It's kind of scary. So, anyways, if you don't want the Mercy Mythic, you could buy the Orisa Mythic instead. What the hell is wrong of you? But yeah, the whole theme that we've had this season with Mirror Watch was something that was teased at BlizzCon, and I really like this theme. I really like the idea of the whole what-if scenario. What if Sombra was a good person? I mean, she kind of is a good person. She just she just has her own morals. I don't know. I, don't, I get, She just works for Overwatch now. You know what I mean? What if Doomfist was a good person? Yeah, and it's like, what if uh, Mercy never saved Genji? Well, he lives in Australia now. So that, that's what happens, everybody. If, uh, if a mysterious woman doesn't save you on your lives, you will end up in Australia. You've been warned. Find a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, the whole idea around the skins is really good. I'm a little bit upset because we didn't get a Lucio skin this season, but uh, you know, the art director for Overwatch has come out and said, yeah, we had the idea of Vishgar Lucio. We didn't do it though, but we could do it in the future. So that's great. Um, it might happen. It might not happen. I think my idea for like a Meryl Watch Lucio would be something a little bit more crazy. Like maybe like a Talon Lucio. Vishgar Lucio is a cool idea, but Talon Lucio sounds so much cooler. Because I, I like I like Lucio, but I wish he was like, you know, he had moments where it's like, oh, you know, let's let's not heal the team. Well, that's like the other way around. Like evil Lucio would be like, let's heal the team. Something like that. I, I don't know. But yeah, I think something like a Talon Lucio would be really cool where he's a bit more like, evil, and he's angry, you know, all that sort of stuff, because, like, Lucio is like, a really upbeat, positive character, you never really have a moment where he's, like, ah, Symmetra, you little poo-poo head, well, how dare you burn down my town, or something, <laughs> <clears throat> all right, I'm going off track, but, yeah, the whole theme was sick, I like the Mirror Watch skins, I really like the Mirror Watch game mode, that was great, I really like that, there was some, uh, you know, unique abilities that got added into the game, it's, like, Reinhardt with, like, Bap's window on his shield, 
Uh, Doomfist had a shout. Sombra was able to like give her team like some heals and a, and a fire rate buff. And some of the changes were cool because I like the whole idea of fire rate buffs. I think that's really, really fun. Uh, Mercy was also really, really good. I thought the supports were pretty underwhelming. I didn't really like playing Ana in the mode. I didn't really like playing Zen. I didn't really like playing Brig. I thought the supports were all really, really boring except Mercy. So maybe Mercy was just like, yeah, check this out. I'm cool as hell. So, you know, she has some Mercy. She, she absolutely owned. But yeah, maybe uh, Mirror Watch could return in the future. And then they could have Mirror Watch Lucio where if he's healing the enemy, they take damage. Ooh, drama. So that'd be cool. But now Mirror Watch game mode is gone. And I don't know why they did that, because it's like, who the hell is queuing up for low gravity? What the, what the hell do we have in the arcade category right now? Bounty Hunter? Low... Like, I could, I could just have this on in the background while I talk, and I'm not going to get a game. Um, so... <laughs> but yeah, that's mainly the things I like about this season. Uh, but let's talk about the things that I didn't like about this season, and that is Venture. And not that I don't like the character, I just dislike how this character has been treated by just Blizzard, Overwatch, all this sort of stuff, right? And this is more so criticism, where I think that, uh, like, this character's released with no origin story, this character released with barely any skins at all, we got an epic skin halfway into the season, we didn't get a legendary skin, we barely got any highlight intros, emotes, anything like that. And it's like, what What the hell? This is like one thing that is, is people are going to be super hyped for. We had like a playtest, we had... Uh, I don't know, it's a new hero! It's, it's like, this is the thing that's going to make you money. But it's like, why were we hesitant on releasing their skin at the start of the season? That is one of the things that annoy me a lot. We have the Ice Cream Venture skin. Why the hell do we not give Venture the Ice Cream skin at the start of the season? I'm raging about an Ice Cream skin! It's like, we release it halfway in the season, and most people are going to be bored of the hero by then. The, the character's already gotten nerfed, so most people have already been dropping the hero because they're not super powerful anymore. When you, when you release a character that's pretty strong on release. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, I like this character. This is the character that's gonna get me out of silver. I'm gonna buy a skin because I like him so much. That's that's like a thing that I have as well. If I start playing a new hero in quick play for fun, I'm like, ooh, I like this character. I'm gonna buy a skin for this character. So then I do. And then they get nerfed next week. And it's like, ooh, I just wasted my money. Ooh, time to go back to Lucio. You know what I mean? So I just found it really weird that Venture's whole release schedule of stuff was just very odd. I assume they obviously wanted to market around like the Mirror Watch stuff a lot more, but it's still it's still weird to have your new character kind of be like the face of the season. I like what was the name of the season again? It's like uh, Venture Fourth, something like that. The, the the name is in the in the season's title or something like that. So why didn't we get like a, a Venture skin early in the season or even anything Venture related in the Battle Pass? I think we got a moat and a victory pose and maybe a voice line. And that's it. Not even a skin of the Battle Pass. So what the hell? Am I cooked? Am I stupid to think that maybe we should have gotten some cosmetics for the character in the battle pass or earlier in the season? I don't know. And moving on, we just didn't get an origin story as well. Instead, we got like a 50 second animation where it kind of goes over like a little adventure that Venture had going into Cairo and taking an artifact, fighting some talent grunts, and that's it. I think it was Cairo. Sorry if I'm wrong on that. But yeah, they fought some talent grunts. They got an artifact. And that's about it. It kind of just gives like an overview of their personality. They're like a bubbly character that... I likes digging, that likes artifacts, that's really it. Now, if you're someone like me, you're probably asking the question, well, why do they like digging? What kind of person are they? Are they a good person? Are they a bad person? Are they an anti-hero? Do they have any, like, history with Overwatch characters or talent characters? Anything like that. What's, what's up? What am I, you know, and so you're kind of just expecting something like that out of the origin story. But we didn't get an origin story, so you're like, oh, well... Twitter says they eat rocks. I'm just going to run with that. Great. And and everyone's kind of just got the whole thing where it's like, this character eats rocks. It's funny as hell. And it's great. But yeah, that's one of my things that's a little bit worrying going into the future seasons. I feel like Space Ranger might get a lot more stuff in the future. Maybe they just didn't think people wouldn't be that interested in Venture. But I hope it's like they've kind of realized that, oh, wow, we should have put a lot more into Venture's release because a lot of people care about this character. I care about the character. I mean, now I don't really care about him anymore because it's like... Like, they've already got nerfed, they've already got, like, I didn't even bother buying the skin for him because they just released it so late that I just kind of, the hype for me died down for the character, where it's like, okay, well, I'm just, just I'm just gonna wait for the next Lucio skin that comes out in four seasons from now. Woo! So, yeah, it, it just felt weird to me. So, if the Overwatch team is listening to this, get back to Origin Stories or something, maybe, maybe have Venture appear in Origin Story. I think we have a comic coming up with Venture soon, so that's great. 
but I, I still like the origin stories. And if that's something that's kind of just getting getting stopped, that's kind of sad. Because if it wasn't for origin stories, we wouldn't have gotten that Six Sigma uh, one. Where, you know, it got made into a TikTok audio with the Playboy card in the background. See, like, what TikTok audios do numbers for the game, man. You don't understand. People are like, oh my god, that's Sigma from Overwatch. I haven't played Overwatch in ages. I'm going to pick it up again. They reinstall Overwatch. They're like, holy moly, this game's still terrible. And then they... <laughs> I need to stop laughing at my own jokes, but I'm so funny. Uh, anyways, all right, so now we're going to talk about Overwatch Balance. Now, do keep in mind, I am a Lucio player, so what I like is going to be completely different to what you like. You might like poke metas, but I like fast, chaotic metas where things are just fast, and I feel like I'm working with my tank super well. So I don't like Orisa. I don't like Orisa, and I don't like Roadhog. I like metas where I can work with my tank a bunch. I mean, my one of my favorite duos is a Junker Queen player. Romani, love that guy. Every time I run it down with Romani just playing uh, Junker Queen, I'm like, this is great. I'm speeding this guy around. He's killing five every fight. This is what it's like to like Mercy Pocket a Sojourn who's like aimbotting. This is just what it must feel like. This is what it is. This is just the Lucio equivalent of, of Mercy Pocketing a Sojourn. So this is wonderful. So this season started off with the Orisa meta and I, I really wasn't a big fan of that. And that kind of made me like, whatever. Yeah, Orisa, every single game. And being a support player, I noticed as well is that counter swapping is still kind of a big thing in the moment and people kind of say like oh but counter swapping is part of the game and all this sort of stuff personally i i understand that yes is part of the game but i still think it's kind of stupid it's like oh yeah well you go you go this character i'm gonna go malga you go this character i'm gonna go orissa and it's especially like counter swapping is totally a fine thing but it really depends on what the whole main like free meta tanks are i always kind of see it as like you know, every single season, there's always, like, the rock, paper, scissors of tank. And it's kind of like, oh, but if it's, like, Malga, Orisa, and Roadhog, that doesn't really seem like a super healthy, fun rotation of tanks to go through. But if it's something like, maybe, like, Winston, D.Va, and then, uh, Junker Queen, or something like that, it kind of feels a little bit more healthier in a sense, but that's, that's just kind of, like, how I see it. Some people obviously going to see it a little bit differently. So I'm going to reiterate. I'm going to say more so like maybe like Winston, Junker Queen, and then Sigma. I obviously think Reinhardt kind of like struggles a little bit at times. I think it's actually pretty good this season if you have teamwork. But if you don't have teamwork, it kind of sucks. But, you know, that's that's just how I feel about it. That's how I kind of see it. I'm not a tank player, so I can't really talk on this stuff that much. But, yeah, I've noticed a lot of games recently. My tanks are constantly counter swapping. And I'm like, oh, my God. I both of you having fun? And I asked one of my tanks if they're having fun. And like, well, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. And I was like, all right, man, whatever. Have fun, I guess. And the enemy tank was just absolute trash talking. Calling me an absolute loser. And I was kind of like, you know, it would be funny if we lost this game because I I'm kind of rooting for the enemy tank here because <laughs> my, my tank's just counter swapping all game. And I'm like, I was kinda, is, that, is that fun? I don't know. But I think counter swapping is kind of like, it's a double-edged sword where yes, it can be okay. And it's totally fine because yes, it is a part of the game, but it really depends on like the rotation of tanks. I've kind of just been on a broken record repeating the same things over and over again. But but yeah, that's it. They also started the season off with a weird change to Lucio. It wasn't a nerf. It wasn't really a buff. I labeled it as a nerf because, well, uh, uh, clickbait. Yeah! But for the Lucio players that uh, know what I'm talking about, it was basically his primary fire damage got nerfed down to 18 instead of 20. So 20 to 18. And then his boot buff got buffed up to 45 damage instead of, I think, 35 or something like that. And I was like, okay, this is this is totally random and totally weird. And it's always my problem with Lucio is that I have to reload a bunch on this character. And I feel like reducing his primary fire damage, especially when you're fighting someone, you're going to lose the 1v1 because you have to reload every single damn time. Because, oh my god, all they need to do to buff Lucio, in my opinion, is not a boot buff or a damage buff or like fire rate buff or anything like that. Just give him like four more ammo or a faster reload speed or something like that. And I know Lucio is in a really, really good spot at the moment. He's one of the best supports in the game. I'm just saying, if they want to do something to Lucio, just give him more reload speed if they're going to reduce his damage. That's all I ask for, man. That'd be wonderful. But they're not going to do that. They're going to be like, well, guess what, guys? We actually made it that if you touch a wall on Lucio, you get jump scared. Have fun. But yeah, uh, I've noticed that with the DPS passive changes, a lot of people have kind of just been struggling with this season quite a bit. I'm not saying that the DPS passive is broken or anything. I think it's totally fine and understandable why this sort of thing has kind of like been like the thing. Uh, also, the global healing changes are also really, really good too. So that's great. Uh, but I've noticed that a lot of supports have kind of just fallen out of being picked a lot. And this is mainly from a, a top 500's perspective. But I feel like I would get a lot of different supports on my team. And I've always just kind of feel like, oh, you know, I would get Mercies on my team. I'd get Iardis on my team. I'd get Briggs on my team. I'd get, uh, you know, Moira. I'd get 
all the supports, but now it's kind of lately, it's just been a lot of Kiriko. And that's not me saying that I think Kiriko is broken. I think that's more so just me saying that like a lot of supports have kind of struggled a lot this season because their characters just kind of suck with the DPS passive. So yeah, it's like Lucio is still thriving. Good for him. But I, I kind of think that it's getting stale in the sense of I'm kind of getting tired of getting the exact same support synergies every game. I mean, that's why I like playing with Aspen, right? Because she doesn't really like playing Kiriko. She likes playing Kiriko, but she doesn't want to play Kiriko every game. So she's like, I want to play Life Weaver. I want to play Mercy. I want to play Brig. I want to play Zen. And it's like, this is fun. This is great because it's variety. It feels a bit more... Every single game feels fresh because it's like, oh, I get a different support on my team every single game because Aspen's like, what kind of dice will I roll this game? And majority of the time, we're winning with dumb support comps. It's great. But that kind of goes on to the thing as well is that I'm kind of thinking that uh, DPSs have kind of gotten into the state of a lot of them are very, very stale, where it's just kind of the same DPSs get played every game. You see a lot in my videos where it's just me jumping on Widows all the time, and that's mainly the fun games. Most of the time, it's always Tracer and Sojourn I'm always going up against, which I kind of find an incredibly boring and annoying combo. I think Tracer is totally healthy and fine for the game, but I still think she's a little bit crazy strong and maybe paired with a Sojourn. And I'm going to talk about Sojourn because I really don't like Sojourn, okay? And I understand that some people might like her. I don't like her. I think she's an annoying character. It is annoying as hell to verse her because the whole cycle of Sojourn is like this to me. I get a Roadhog or any sort of big beefy tank on my team. The Sojourn shoots my Roadhog or my big beefy tank and then she has 100 charge. So now Sojourn has Rail. Sojourn looks at me, rails me in the head. Oh, whoops. Unfortunately, because my tank did his job taking damage, I now get punished for it. It's annoying as hell. I don't like it. I think Sojourn's just an irritating character. I under, it's, it's it's like, it's like well, just don't peek her. But it's like, well, I'm not going to peek her, but she's going to build rail again off my tank that's just taking a million damage because he's on Roadhog. Just re easy damage. But Roadhog is like one of the strong tanks at the moment. So we have to play Roadhog. <laughs> if you guys didn't know, I don't really like Sojourn because she's kind of just been meta since like season one of Overwatch 2. And she's always been like a pretty solid pick. You know, I just would like it if maybe a different DPS was meta. Maybe like Widowmaker or something. <laughs> but yeah, I've kinda, I kind of feel like I'm getting a little bit tired of just versing Sojourn every single game. Tracer is kind of getting on my nerves a little bit, but it does feel like it's kind of satisfying when you win a 1v1 against a Tracer. When you're versing a Sojourn, it's just stressful as hell. It's like, oh my God, this Sojourn sucks at the game. That's why she lost this 1v1. It's just because she sucks at this game and that's it. Whereas it's, if I outplay a Tracer, it's like, this is like an actual fair matchup, 1v1, all that sort of stuff. So it's not the end of the world. But yeah, at least on the bright side, Cassidy's Magnetic Grenade is going to get reworked where it doesn't auto-track uh, anymore. Stupid as hell character. What the hell is going on? I'm not going to forgive them for that stupid Magnetic Grenade that hinders my abilities. I hit, I get hit by that cast grenade. I'm like, okay, well, I'm dead. I can't, I can't jump on walls. This grenade sticks to my butt. Suddenly, I can't go on the walls. What's up with that? I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, that, that's great. I felt like the, But I have felt like the balance this season has kind of been uh, really stale in the sense of... I just feel like the variety of characters being picked has just gone down significant, significantly. I've noticed a lot of Reinhardt players in top 500 now, which is great. I'm fully welcome with that because they're the silliest players ever. So shout outs to all the Reinhardt players that are in high ranked or just Reinhardt players in general because they're the silliest tanks to verse. They troll like crazy 24 seven and that's how they win games. It's great. It is wonderful. But for DPS, it's just mainly the same stuff every single game. I kind of miss Junkrat being like a, a, a decent DPS pick, mainly because getting chased down by a Junkrat tire could just be the most adrenaline building, like funniest thing ever. And it's like, I haven't versed uh, a lot of Junkrat players in a long time. And that kind of makes me sad. So, you know, maybe we should give Junkrat a little buff, but only for me, not for anyone else. Mainly just so I can make some funny little videos where I get chased down by a Junkrat tire and it's funny as hell. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good deal. I think that's a good deal. But to close it all off, I wish there was a bit more variety in uh, like the, the high rank Overwatch meta, I guess. I've kind of just felt like same heroes are getting played 24-7. I'm saying this is a one trick, but you get what I mean, okay? I just think it's the same characters all the time. A lot of characters get nerfed, but just a tiny little bit. And the same characters kind of just don't get touched ever. Does that make sense? I'm not a balanced talk type of guy, so, so ignore this bit, okay? Talk about the next big thing that happened this season. The Porsche collab. That's right, guys. The Porsche collab. You want to know my notes on this? All I wrote was, this sucked. I don't like the Porsche collab, guys. I really don't like the Porsche collab. I think this is one of the most random, weirdest Porsche collab, like, I mean, Overwatch collabs ever. We did have the Gentle Monster Diva skin, which, which was a bit weird, but... This one's also weird. Uh, what, what the hell? Overwatch cars? What were we gonna get this season? Everyone's speculating. Wow, this is crazy. 
And I, I really dislike this collab for one reason, is that you have a car collab for, for things that, that go on the ground, go vroom, 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 four wheels, all this sort of stuff. And you give the skins to uh, flying characters. Okay, so we have uh, a, a German guy that like charged on the ground that you could give race car sounds to, or like Bastion who kind of has wheels. You could give Tracer who is fast. Or, you know, when Lucio amps his speed, he could go vroom, vroom, instead of, you know, like that, that would be cool. But instead we gave it to the two flying characters. That's, that's cool, I guess. Whatever, man. And I, I don't know if it's in the sense of like, maybe we're, we're going to give it to Diva and Farah because they're popular characters. People will buy skins for those characters. But it's like, I haven't seen anyone wearing these Porsche skins anyway. I haven't seen many people wearing them anyway. So do people buy them? I don't know, man. Maybe people did, but I'm not. I'm not the craziest big fan of these skins. Uh, I really like how these skins were just uh, just plain white. Uh, I guess if that makes sense, they were just like silver Porsches. I wish there was some more color. Maybe like a red Porsche would have been cool, uh, or like a, a blue one or something like that. That that would be cool. But yeah, maybe I just don't like silver because my boss at McDonald's uh, drove a Mustang. And it was just, it was just white. It's like, why would you buy an expensive sports car and not, 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 not put some color in it? Put, put a little stripe on it. Put a little flame on the side of it, bro. Do you not want to be cool? But then again, this was the guy that asked me, uh, why would you watch someone play video games? And then proceeded to tell me um, that he likes football. He likes watching grown men play with balls. So I was like, okay. Sorry, I guess. I don't know. I don't, he was, he was really mean to me. I'm, I'm trauma dumping here. I'm sorry. <laughs> One thing that I forgot to talk about was the tank changes that came in mid-season. This was um, something that was kind of crazy. And people are like, what the hell? What is going on? And it's mainly just uh, tanks took 25% damage in headshots and then took 50% knockback reduction instead of 30%. And if you've tried booping a tank on Lucio this season, you've kind of realized, what the hell am I doing in my life? Why am I doing this? I could go get a degree. I could literally be studying for my exams. Why am I trying to boop a tank in Overwatch right now? This is the biggest waste of my time ever. Um, but yeah, if you if you post a clip of you trying to boop a tank on Twitter, people are gonna be like, really, yeah? Yeah, man, get owned. You can't one-shot a tank on a four-second cooldown now. Get owned. Even though this tank is standing right on the edge, get owned, buddy. Yeah, get owned. Hashtag, get owned. Uh, yeah, th there's been a lot of drama about this. People have been asking, what's my opinion on it? Do I care? Personally, I think it's fine if a tank has, like, crazy knockback reduction. I totally understand what's the whole point of it. And I only say this, you gotta listen to me for a second, and you gotta hear me out, okay? If Lucio could still boop tanks, people would keep complaining about boop. Like crazy 24-7 to the point where the whole knockback would have gotten nerfed and we'd be back in the state of no one gets booped ever again. It's one of those states where boop is absolutely terrible. So it's like, I call it the monkey paw where it's like, okay, so we can't boop tanks anymore, but that's fine. We can still boop supports. We can still boop DPS and that's totally great. But it's also funny as hell because if I boop a tank off the map, that is funny as hell now. What the hell is this tank doing? He has literally like Fisher Price, Hasbro, my first time playing tank. You know, this guy can't get knocked off the map. And if he somehow gets knocked off the map, he's a loser. How does that happen? But yeah, so yeah, my, my whole thing is that, you know, it, it, it sucks, but it's also like, at least I can still boop DPS and support. If they know boop on like other, other stuff, then yeah, I'll be a little bit annoyed then because it's like, what the hell? But I still think with like the tanks having like some headshot reduction, I feel like you could have just put Lucio's health back up because mainly the reason why Lucio was getting like not health, uh, damage up on his primary fire, which I was talking about earlier. Because it's like, if, if that, that's mainly where Lucio was getting a lot of his damage done, was just headshotting tanks and just farming, like, uh, ult off tanks. So you could put his, you could put his damage up. I'm biased to you saying that. You know what I mean? Hashtag buff mercy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tally it out. I'm gonna balance everything out by saying, yeah, guys, buff mercy as well. Why are you at it? Why not? Anyways, uh, I'm yapping again. But yeah, I wanted to talk about something else that has kind of gotten to my mental a little bit and kind of made me not to want to like really interact in the Overwatch community in a while. So this one's a little bit more depressing. But I just felt like the community has gotten a lot more toxic recently, mainly like more so the competitive side of things. I have Twitter Twitter accounts, okay? I have my main Twitter account, which is mainly where I just, I post memes and all this sort of stuff. I follow other Overwatch creators and all that sort of thing. Uh, and then I have my second Twitter account, which is mainly where I just yap about Overwatch and stuff I'm doing in my life, video stuff, and all that sort of thing. And that one's mainly the Twitter I always spend my time on because it's much more of a chill place over there. I go on my main Twitter account and it's just this absolute cesspool of just people complaining about the game, people fighting over stuff in Overwatch, and just the community being really hostile towards each other. And I'm gonna talk about one thing that's gonna be a little bit controversial 
because it's it's something that's been happening for a while. And if you say that you like this certain thing, you're a shill, whatever. Anyway, wait, we're talking about 5v5 versus 6v6. Let's get this one over and done with. And you give my entire take on it. Guys, I'm a Lucio player. Whatever meta, whatever game mode that Lucio was good in, I prefer more. So if Lucio is good in 5v5, I like Lucio in 5v5. If Lucio is good in 6v6, I like 6v6. As long as my favorite heroes are good, I don't freaking care. I was going to say the F word, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't really care that much if... if Whatever, like 5v5, 6v6. And I understand people want to play with like a second tank. That's totally understandable and that's totally fine. Um, and I'm not going to like be like, yeah, you shouldn't want that. I hate you. Get on. Oh, yeah. Because if people want 6v6, good for them. I just really dislike how the community has become so hostile and toxic over the whole argument around it because it's like, what what the hell are we doing? Are we really that bored this season? And that's kind of how you know when people are arguing hardcore this season. Yes, people are really, really bored because it's just, it's just been drama with 5v5 and 6v6. And it's really bummed me out. And it's really burning me out as someone that wants to interact with like the Overwatch community more or mainly be in the competitive side of the community. But I've kind of realized, yeah, maybe being more of a casual towards this game is a lot more fun than being more of a competitive player. So I, I, I think that's kind of this case. And I hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that doesn't make people angry at me. That's not my intention. I'm just basically saying that 5v5 versus 6v6 uh, is a good thing to talk about, and it's 100% a great thing to talk about. I like seeing the discussions around it, but if it gets too hostile and toxic, I don't really get interested in it anymore. Uh, but I will say, I think it's important that we should also talk about things that should be uh, be getting added to Overwatch. Uh, I played Marvel Rivals recently. I only played about 6 hours of it, and then I got really bored of it because the game was kind of not really my taste uh, at all. And I'm not really a big Marvel person. I like Spider-Man and that's like about it, right? I played a little bit of Marvel Rivals and uh, I noticed that the game has like a factions thing where you can make your own little clan tags and groups where people can join that. And I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and I was like, wow, why doesn't Overwatch have something like that? I swear Overwatch like teased like guilds or something like that a while back, or I don't know if that was something me like hallucinating something or I got a Mandela effect from someone making an edit on TikTok. But Overwatch would be really great if it had guilds, um, you know, also looking for group, you know, sometimes I play Overwatch late at night, quick play, like 1am by myself, and the queue times are really long for some reason, so I might as well just join a group and play with some people, I, I'm, I'd be down to do that, I just want to play with play Overwatch with some people, man, to shorten my queue times, that'd be great, that'd be wonderful, but whatever. Um, and then there's an in-game tournament system with the, with the Marvel Rivals, which I thought was really cool as well, why doesn't Overwatch have that? You know, uh, I feel like signing up for Overwatch tournaments is an absolute pain and trying to find out where they're hosted on is crazy because it's like, okay, well, this, this tournament's hosted on this website. Oh, but this one's hosted on this website. And then you have to make an account and then people are going to see that to make an account and they're going to be like, I don't want to have to make an account, man. This is, this is dumb as hell. This is stupid as hell. All this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of annoying me as well. But yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, I think cosmetics this season have also just been a little bit weird. I like the Meryl Watch stuff, uh, but I feel like pricing for a lot of these skins this season is really weird. Like, this is a recolor, right? We've all seen this Widowmaker skin before. This skin's gonna be like 1,900 in the shop, and I feel like if you already own a recolored version of a skin, you should get it for a little bit cheaper. Like, there should always be like, these skins should always come in bundles, where it's like, you get this skin, and this skin, for cheap! Because I, I don't think this is like a terrible Widow skin. I think I like the green on the outfit. I like the pink here. This is cool. Um, but, you know, this is 1,900. Why am I going to buy this? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, man, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell people that, yes, I have this Lucio skin. Why did I buy it, man? Because I was going to write Evil Steve 2 into the Lucio Mafia storyline. And I was like, this skin's so stupid, man. I, I'm so embarrassed that I spent 1,900 dollars. <laughs> So not dollars, uh, I've watched coins on this skin. I'm never gonna use it ever. I know some people might like this skin, but personally, I'm, I'm not I'm not too crazy on this skin. I like the gun, but whatever. Uh, yeah, recolor skin pricing is is stupid to me. Um, I think it should just be a little bit cheaper, especially if, if you already own the skin. Nothing nothing too crazy, you know, like this victory pose. Shout out to this victory pose. But it, yeah, that's, that's, that's really it with the skin stuff. Um, you know, give Lucio another, another recolor ribbit. I'm all for it. If they give another recolor for Lucio ribbit, hell yeah, man. I want a red ribbit. That would be cool. I'm kind of just yapping about stuff that, uh, I want for the game. Um, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the Hero Mastery Gauntlet, uh, getting removed next season. So this was a PvE type mode where you could play against little bots. You play with three of your friends and you defend the, these little towers here, um, from, from bots taking him. I think it's a cool little concept. Uh, but it's a very simple thing that 
many people would play for a little bit uh, and then get tired of and then move on. And and that's that's fine. Uh, you could also play with practice versus AI. And I don't know if they changed something because there used to be a message here, but maybe it's because I'm in a 30 minute queue for low gravity because no one is playing this, by the way. Um, but yeah, when you played with AI, you weren't able to get challenges, but maybe they changed it ever since, uh, you know, the, they announced that they're going to scrap it so people can get their challenges with the AI now. So that's great. Um, but before it was, it was like, yeah, you can't get XP from playing this. Screw you, buddy. So it's like, if you have no friends, ah! but yeah, I noticed that if you tried playing this, uh, solo, it would, it wouldn't really be the best experience ever. I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry. But on the bright side, uh, we're still getting like hero mastery solo missions. These are still staying in the game, which I thought these were always some really, really cool concept. I really like the Winston one. I like the Diva one, Echo one. Genji one, Lucio one, and even the Mercy one. These ones are all really, really cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Echo one actually recently because I've been playing this one a lot and I got to rank four in it. So, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not just speaking out of my ass here. I, I, I got to rank four playing uh, Echo Hero Mastery because I really like this one a lot. If you guys haven't tried this one, it's it's definitely one worth checking out because this is by far the most uh, fun one next to Lucio's, I think. So yeah, at least this is staying in the game, but it, it is unfortunate that this is uh, just being removed. Um, you know, I, I felt like this might have done a lot better if you could just put these towers into Overwatch maps. Just like, if you put towers around, uh, like, you know, Circle Royale or Parisio or something like that. And maybe people would find it a little bit more interesting. Because just being in a, in a flat blue map might not be that interesting for everyone. Because if you're someone who plays Lucio on this, it's kind of hard to use your Warite ability. Because there, there's no, like, actual proper walls uh, around the map. It's kind of just like, there's a wall here, there's a wall here, wall here. But getting around the map is a, is a little bit a little bit awkward at times because it's just so it's so flat. It feels weird. It's like walking around a junker town first point, you know. But it is quite unfortunate this is being scrapped. I thought it was a cool idea and concept, but I feel like you could easily make this a lot better if you could like let people use Workshop with it. You know, you have the Overwatch Workshop uh, that people make some really cool ideas with, but that hasn't gonna update in ages. You could add some Workshop stuff where it could be like you can give people PVE upgrades. You can just make the community do it. I feel like this game can easily survive for a long time if they just let the community have access to stuff uh like the pve missions for example you know you have the overwatch overwatch 2 story mode stuff that let's be real this is going to get abandoned there's going to be nothing more for this um let players be able to make workshop updates for this this would be really cool i, ho I hope that in the future they let people just do workshop modes of this so people could just be like yeah, Lucio actually has some cool upgrades. Tracer has some upgrades. Let the community make the PvE for you. Because then people will see, like, cool videos of PvE upgrades made by the community. Be like, oh my god, I want to spend $15 on this. That's great! You know? I don't know, man. I, I apologize for getting a little bit, like, heated and frustrated there. But it's like, I like the little PvE stuff. These little stories aren't, like, the craziest things ever. But it's just like, it, it annoys me how these things get abandoned. And it's like, oh, we don't know what to do. Like, how do we, how do we keep this alive? And it's just like, let the community do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you could make, like, you could let the community create stuff, add stuff to your game, uh, without them getting paid, and it, it would do good for the games. Like, cause, I, I, I like, I'm, I'm going back to this again, and it's like, if you, if you put players in the situation of like, oh my God, look at this TikTok of Lucio with like a double boop or like a Doomfist charge boop. That's so cool. How do I get access to this? And it's like, oh, you just go to the shop and you buy the invasion bundle. Cause then, then it's, we're helping you make money, man. You know what I mean? That's just, it's just annoying, man. Cause it's like, it's like these things can be abandoned. That's fine by like the, the Overwatch team. Cause obviously it might not be making them money, but it's just like, let the players just step in and do stuff for you. I, I don't know. So I feel like Overwatch Workshop should get some more love because there's some really cool stuff in the Overwatch Workshop. Let's take a look right now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got one dad versus 11 kids. This is one of the most popular modes in, get in Overwatch. People love this, man. You know, just let the let the, let the damn community just make stuff for you. They, they can do it for free. They like this game. They're passionate about this game. All this sort of stuff. It's great. You know what I mean? Like, people make their own little Overwatch stories. It's great. I like that sort of stuff. I, I don't know, man. Um, I apologize for, for ranting and getting a little bit angry at times. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I think... That's really it for my rant. I'm sorry this was all over the place. Uh, but if you guys want to hear me rant about more stuff, let me know. And uh, hopefully hopefully we will have like the same opinions and stuff. And agree. Because I want this game to do well. I like this game a lot. Because this is one of the only games that, uh, you know, I can, I can play for day on end. And I like making content on it. You know, I make all my videos myself and edit all my stuff myself. 
I just want people to have fun with this game again, man. That's really, uh, that's really all I ask for, you know? All right. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Love you heaps. Don't know why I said love you, but yep. <laughs> Take care. All right, see you guys. Much love. Two hours. <laughs> and that, uh, hey, woo, yeah, no one plays this mode. What a surprise.